What about people who don't choose to live in the Venus Project? How are they affected when the Venus Project becomes worldwide? But they don't have to. Yeah, they don't have you to. Know, and like you're saying, why would they not want to? Yeah. Jacques used to mention that, um, say, somebody like the Amish people who like want to live on their own um, and like to make things out of wood. And don't want to use technology. Yeah, but if it burns down, they're responsible. And if they want to eat certain foods, then great. Can we study that? See how that works. See how that lifestyle works. Yeah, they see might what have we can to get. Offer all of That's us. right. Yeah, I agree. They almost might have something to offer all of us. <laughs> I don't know, but they're, they're, I think certainly as a reaction to the way things are now, having a simpler way makes sense to me. But on the other hand, why give up all this beautiful technology and advancement and science Absolutely. and knowledge that we have and just throw it away? That, that yeah. seems like leaving, yeah. leaving something if on it, the table that was really valuable. Absolutely. If it serves you. Otherwise, if we got rid of the, the technology, we'd, we'd have slaves. We'd be pulling the boats. Some people would be the slaves. Yeah. Now we have tons of, of slaves, but they're technical slaves. Wow. So that's much they're better. They're cubicles hammering away. Yeah. So, um, okay, so the Venus Project advocates for surveying resources to determine the Earth's carrying capacity, and you've talked about that. What happens when the data shows we're already beyond that capacity? I mean, what if it shows we're okay currently, but are extremely limited in how much room there is to grow? Um, well, the re resource-based economy is managing resources on a global scale, yeah. understanding what we have and how to use them wisely to fit in with the carrying capacity. So. <laughs> You know, either way you look at it, we're here if we are, the, the resource-based economy still serves our interests better if we're in dire straits, which we are, in terms of how to use resources and how to enable everybody to have access to those resources. But, you know, even, even the wealthiest of today would have a higher standard of living. And um, because everybody would be trained in something that could contribute to their lifestyle too. You know, it doesn't seem like a very high standard of living when they have bulletproof windows on their cars in some countries so their kids won't be stolen for ransom, when they have bars on their windows so and helicopters on their rooftops to escape. And they're, they they're are, eating their foie gras all by themselves. And they are afraid <laughs> of, of, of some kind of revolt. So, you know, the people on the outside, they're afraid of them coming in and yeah. taking what, what they have and they don't have. Mm. So... You know, Jacques had a great saying. Somebody came up to him who was very wealthy and said, Jacques, you're, you're so smart. How come you're not wealthy? Hmm. And he said, you're wealthy. How come you're not smart? And a lot of times people are smart in business, yeah. but they're failures as a, a human being in their lives. They can't, you know, communicate with their kids or their wives or other people in their, in their company on their alone and doing drugs, you know, just to dummy things down. Mm, hiring someone else to raise their kids. Yeah, yeah, so I don't know what kind of life that is. They're isolated, you know. We're an ultra-social being and they're isolating them, so they're going against our nature, which is to care and to nurture each other and to live as in society and in, in community. And, um... I mean, you have I this elite society, yeah. they're, they're off over there. That's not where we want to, we don't want to be off anywhere. It's lonely off over there. Yeah, and, and it's not really, I'm not advocating the wealthy against the poor, as I mentioned, that's what no. communism does, yeah. but it's, it's, it's about a, a culture um, against scarcity. Abundance for all. So we can use our resources that can go around for everybody. Even if, if we have a scarcity in something, we put scientists on that so they develop that product to take that, to fill in for that service. You know, there's a lot of things within the resource-based economy that enables resources to go much farther, like the, the library and the access center. Just like the public library, people go in and share the books and bring them back when they're not using it. It's the same thing with the access center where you, people can go in and access whatever they need. It, there's no possession, so they don't have to hoard it. You, you know, you 
continue this culture because they keep buying and selling things that keeps the monetary system going but you don't have to do that you can make resources go farther when if you're finished with something you bring it to the access center or it's brought to the access center and other people can use it if you don't use it every day you don't need to hoard things or store mm -hmm. things or wait for your going to on your vacation to use your whatever you want to use mm -hmm. your skis your skis are right there at the resort and you, you have the best skis because you don't want to make things to wear out and break down because that's a burden on everybody building obsolescence yeah, yeah. No, that's wonderful because it's really, um, we're start we're laying the groundwork for it now with the shared economy, with the, the car services where you don't need a car, people are driving around and you hop in. Um, people are even taking their own car and renting it out at the times they're not using it. Or yeah. I get to work at 9 in the morning and I'm not going to leave till 5 o'clock. From 9 to 5, my car's available. Well, yeah. you're getting money for it now because we need money to pay the rent and turn the utilities on. But in a world where we don't have that, then hey, I'm not using the car, take it. Yeah. Just get me back by five because I got to get great. And you know? we don't really want cars. We want efficient transportation yeah. that takes you any place you want to go. Yeah, I love that. A jock used to say, you don't want money. You want access to things. That's right. So That's you right. don't want a car. You want to yeah. get where you need to go. If we have a great way to do that, yeah. you'd use it. And when people say, well, what do you want? They really don't know what they want. And a lot of times when I first used to hear a jock say this, you have to tell them what they want, what they want to want what are you doing you know but I understand that more so now because you ask people what they want they want a good job that makes a lot of money so they can get a, an, another house and give their wife what they want and send their kids to the best school you don't want the job you want access to those things so people can go in and check, check out whatever they want and sure sounds like utopia to, to me you don't call it utopia but it's a, <laughs> if utopia is everything works and everyone's content and everyone has their needs met, then, you know, we're just talking semantics. It is a world that is, fun why don't we call it functional, you know, and, and serving you know, well, to all it's, of us. It's, a, it's not a utopia because there is no end goal that we're going for. It's, it's a, a better step than what we have now by mm -hmm. far mm -hmm. um, because we are going over that precipice and we'll probably you know, to be able to survive in this in this world, we're going to have to do something else because yeah. this is not working. Yeah. So utopia, I think, literally means nowhere, <laughs> but it's a it's a emergent society. Mm -hmm. uh, it's emergent. Yes, it's, it's emerging. Yes, constantly it's emerging constantly and changing and improving and yeah. updating. So there is no fixed thing that we're working toward. There is no utopia. Yeah. So. Um, Okay, here's how I want to kind of wrap this up because Roxanne, you are the one. You are representing the Venus Project for all intents and purposes. You are it, these are Jock's ideas and concepts, and and you were right there alongside him for over 40 years, building the models, building the buildings at the Venus Project current property with your own hands. You know more about Jock and what he has expounded than anyone in the world for sure. And you're the, the sort of figurehead for all intents and purposes. And not that it's seen as a hierarchy like that, but you've inherited all this, this wisdom and information and all of his work. And you're at the helm for, for all intents and purposes. And as much as we love you, and you may be so healthy right now, and I must add to this that we were talking this morning, you're staying in our home, and we're really into promoting healthy lifestyle and learning and growing and emerging, and how can we be healthier, healthier? My diet has narrowed, 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 mm -hmm. and I've gotten rid of all the things that I believe to be harmful until we narrow it down. And you are amazing, because I don't know if we're, we're not, we won't say your age, but at your age, you, you are one of the few people I know in the world who is on no medication not running around to doctors all the time. You are a healthy person. But as healthy as you may be right now, you certainly won't be around forever. And, and um, are there others being groomed to take the helm at your, the time of your inevitable demise? And, and what are the plans for the Venus Project beyond Jock and Roxanne? And what provisions are in place for that? Lots of provisions. And we're working Great. on that now. And yeah. I don't really look at myself as at the helm because I work with many different people that do many different things that I can't do <laughs> within the organization. And, and even the board of director, directors for the nonprofit organization, we work, um, I don't know if I would say consensus, because but we work together on making certain decisions that are have to be proven out <laughs> you know we have certain processes where we uh for decision making um i think nate called it 
you can cut this out, but I can't. The baloney detector, <laughs> you know, yeah. oh, how we. We um, call it bullshit oh, detector. Yeah. In the, well, in the punk I, was, scene. I think it was something else. So I've cut that out because I don't remember. He had a good. Um, it wasn't. That was just something I had remembered some someplace else. So please cut that. But um, so it it is. There are many people working on this, and and the matching campaign is going to help tremendously on this because we we want to get Jacques work out there to um, to the general public and we're going to be transcribing all these videos over well we have about 700 more to go he did over 800 um, audio and video because he was more prolific with his lectures so all of this is going out to as many people as possible and we want to educate as many people as possible so they can carry this out mm. so it doesn't turn into what we already have yeah. um, that's a huge fear as we take on more people and do things and we want to be able to educate them as well as to where we're going and what we want to do so i don't really look at myself maybe as much as more as much as maybe other people might look at that i am the the figurehead and i am at the helm there's many people Mm -hmm. behind this and working on it and we want to bring in many more people who are who are very skilled in other areas that we need and that's another thing that we want to do with with the funds that we're trying to get is to bring in those who can research and do the literary reviews of information that we are lacking in to carry this further in the transmedia or the center for resource management we need we're a voluntary organization and because of that we can't pay for those things that we need so we're going to do it through scholarships through a grad students or however we can to get that information and the most up-to-date information and people who can search that survey that put it together and um, and can summarize the, the information that we need to go further so is this grassroots um, you could call it that, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know you have something called POC, which is an acronym that stands for Point of Contact. Yeah. And uh, to, to, I don't want to say earn, but maybe to earn that title, being a point of contact, you've done a certain amount of research and educating yourself through all of the materials of the Venus Project to be able to represent it in, a, in an accurate way. Well, it's not all the materials because we're talking about 800 hours well, of lectures. Of course, but enough to a sufficient level to be able to represent it accurately and true to the Venus Project. In um, some areas, you know, I mean that's a that's saying a lot because it's a it's a hell of a lot of lifetime of work that he did in many different disciplines. So it takes a lot of study, and it also takes a lot of study in in the things that he bases this on that have changed over the years and have progressed. So we need to study that as well to see how it progresses. And in terms of grassroots, I'm not sure how I would say that because um, it, it needs a lot of people who are skilled in many different fields. And I don't know if you would call that grassroots, but um, so we're looking into s scholars that can, can put different information together that we need as well, be able to scan information that way. So um, we, need, we need the help of a lot of different people in different disciplines and um, it, academia as well, which Jacques really was not able to reach out to. And I think also times have changed. And I think his direction is being appreciated more in, in the sciences we are getting more people behind us who are in academia who want to teach it in universities and I think this is really important. It's a direction that we're moving toward. Uh, we want to reach out to different people in that in different fields that can that we need the help with and we, who can push this more so. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if if that would be called grassroots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's through throughout the society that we need help with mm -hmm. to make this happen and especially business management at this time it's not something we who the people who are in our group are highly skilled on but business management that that continues and correlates 
with our values and our social direction, that they understand that. I think of, you know, again, just going back to the representation, you know, we, we have right now you're represent you're, you're the, uh, I don't know, most noteworthy representative of the Venus Project because of the amount of time that you've put in and that you spent at Jock's side. And so it's a matter of um, growing that base of representation. You know? yeah. I mean, I feel to a certain Which, extent I represent the Venus Project. I, I'm, I'm not an official point of contact and I haven't studied extensively all of these 800 lectures, uh, <laughs> you know, obviously. But um, what we're advocating here is a, is a complete rethink, is, is a new approach to everything we do in the world. And um, I certainly advocate for that 100%. Um, so that's where like the, I'm probably getting at with the grassroots is the more just human individuals that we get yeah. who get on board with, we need to do this. We need to take a serious look at this and we need to put what we've got into it. And I like to say we need to put our attention and our energy and effort and our brain power into just learning and studying and researching all we can about it so that we can then represent it and mm -hmm. that we can promote it. And that we can all each within each person we have our own network and our group of people around us we can influence out to that group and more people within that group will then represent and build out from their circle etc cetera, etc cetera. that's i guess what i mean by grassroots and by yeah, having more points of contact and more people yeah. to represent so it isn't all falling on you and that we aren't only hearing from roxanne when we have an interview you know it won't be the only person in the world to interview to talk about the venus project that a lot more people can talk about it and they can now. Yeah. And um, I always try and encourage that to, you know, if I have an interview, I try and pass it on to other people as well. And when people come to, because you're right, they know Jacques and Roxanne from a certain amount of years. But when people come to interview me or at the Venus Project, I always try and make sure they interview other people who are there as yeah. well. Yeah. Good. Well, um, so much love and appreciation and, of course, extensionality <laughs> for you and for all the work you're doing. And you've clearly devoted your life to this. And uh, I just I'm welling up with with uh, emotion here because I appreciate it so much. People aren't doing this for the world. I don't see any other program where this is this is what's at play. I don't see people devoting their life to, you know, I know a few people within the Venus Project who are devoting their lives to volunteering and to representing and being a part of it and helping bring it to life, whether it's transcribing Jock's work or making the videos and, and stuff like we're doing as well, but to get the word out and help it grow and help develop. And, and of course, the matching grant campaign here is, is just infusing more resources um, towards what you're doing but gosh just so much appreciation for your devoted you've devoted your life to this to jock and to the cause and to the work for all of our benefit and what are you getting out of it you're not getting rich off it you're oh, not, I, I you're don't, not I, over there I, driving a rolls royce <laughs> around venus florida by any means and well so, to me i got so much out of it that was so important to my life and my knowledge um I hate to think where I would have been if I hadn't met Jacques. I, I feel so lucky with everything I've experienced with him. I would have never been able to do that. And everything that you're doing is making it so much more possible that these ideas spread. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate what you're doing. Well, I'm giving a lot of what I've got to it. And I am a philanthropist. And I've been looking over the last number of years since I came into money with how can I be most responsible for how I share that and what the causes I represent and contribute to are. And I, I come into thinking about an 80-20 thing now where I'll give 20% of what I give towards triage for now, I call it. People are hurting and they're hungry yeah. and they need our help. But 80% for me has got to go to the future and the big plans and the how are we going to find our way forward and how what are we going to do that's encompassing enough to where these problems are handled and we don't have to nickel and dime 20% yeah, to things. Yeah. That we put 80% towards, no, the big plans for the future that really solve things. And I, I have left the Venus Project in my estate plan. I want to encourage others to do that as well. I'd like to help create a group of people who are proclaiming that we have contributed and, and remembered the Venus Project in our estate plan and that we've literally left money to the Venus Project because if it's one thing in this current society and economic system that, we, that you need, that the Venus Project needs, is the money to get done what you need to That's do true. so that we can do this let's do this it's it's wonderful to talk about it and, and there's so much work to be done and people are on it 
but it, we need that amplification, that bullhorn to tell the world, there's a better way, there's more we can do, there are alternatives, and Jock, a brilliant man, spelled out so many of them for us, and I want to put my resources and my time and energy and attention into helping bring this more to life, more to life, more to life, and help evolve it into existence in it, a bigger, bigger, bigger way. It needs that yeah. tremendously. Yeah. And, you know, once we got popular and more people learned about this and more people learned about the direction, they said, well, how come you're charging? How come you're charging for your books or your tours? And I always say, well, the tax a collector doesn't come over and say, you're doing wonderful social work. You don't have to pay your taxes or you don't have to pay your electric bill because you're, we really like what you're doing. It, it doesn't happen that way. Mm -hmm. And even, even, you know, volunteering, the volunteers have done so much and, and have taken it farther than, you know, I could ever do it or Jack could ever do it. But um, I, I've learned in a lot of ways, if we're not going to be able to do what we need to do just through volunteers alone, because it's this culture has got it wrapped up so much yeah. that you know it's very hard with your family, with your jobs, with your mortgages and the kids and your responsibility to be able to to volunteer what this will take to to happen. You know what it'll take this to make it happen. Yeah. I want to. This to make I want to read. This is a little comment that I had made on social media, um, because I, I was. Uh, well, I even say it in here. So they were asking about the film, and are you going to charge for the film? And you know, I, I, I kind of hear this. How dare you charge yeah. for a film that advocates for no money in the world, and, and yeah. et cetera. And so the film will be available on the website and, and on video on demand, and. Um, for three dollars to to rent the the film, and a portion of those proceeds is going to go directly to the Venus Project. We're bracing ourselves for the backlash of criticism, <laughs> but had to make this difficult decision. We obviously, definitely, and completely support creating a resource-based economy, but currently live in a world where rent, utilities, and food are not free. Yeah. Therefore, the film will not be either for the time being. We do not want to leave anyone out from watching this film as, if money has a hardship. So codes will be available for people who request those who need them. And we love you. We care about you. We are working full time to support the Venus Project ourselves and for better, healthier, smarter ways for humans to live and coexist on this precious planet together. Until we get there, <laughs> we're all pretty well stuck subsisting within the system under which we live. And that's and the, you're in the same boat yeah. we are. And three dollars is not much of a contribution <laughs> in financial terms if they can afford it. Yeah. To yeah. be able to do that too. Yeah. So I think you're you're in that same position. The, the Venus Project needs your money, needs your support because we live in this world. What you're what you're betting on, paying for, what you're investing in is a future where we don't need that, where we're not limited by that, where we're not divided by that and that we are all able to come together as one human family, nurture ourselves and each other and our precious planet. And your skills, people's skills are just yes. as important yes. to help make this progress. We'll reiterate yeah. again, at thevenusproject.com, there is a get involved section and there are all these teams of volunteers, whether it's helping to fundraise or helping get the word out on social media or other ways, and whether it's bringing your, your highly skilled set of architecture, civil engineering, industrial design, all of these elements that are needed to be able to create big facilities so we can get the next big thing going. Uh, transcription uh, ability so we can get uh, capture all of Jock's materials. Or proofreaders or publishers because mm -hmm. we want to publish that material yeah. and get it out there as well. We want to make volumes of his work yeah. and then we want to um, categorize what's in each yeah. lecture after we get it transcribed and make specific books too. Come forward and make yourselves be known to us and to the Venus Project and we're <sighs> It's a big undertaking and we need Huge. all the help we could get and, and all the advocacy and promotion that we can get. Help bring this into existence. Before you criticize and before you wag a finger and before you ask, well, why, isn't, why haven't they done it already and where's the first city? Ask yourself what you've done and ask yourself, right. most importantly, what you can do. And the more that you participate and the more that you bring to this, the more you're going to help bring it to life. And that's where the satisfaction comes from. I feel so good about what I'm doing to help represent something that I really believe in. 
and it feels great and it's I can worth understand it. that. <laughs> so join the conversation, make a comment, come join the the effort to bring the Venus project to life more and more and more. It already is to life. You have a property, you have materials, you have a lot of volunteers on board, you have a lot of um, you know, videos and audio and stuff. Let's keep the momentum going and keep expanding on what's already here and make it available in more languages so it's available to more people in the world. That's what is needed. And the more you participate, the better you'll feel and the, the faster this is going to come about. There's a long way to go. Yeah. yeah. And if you know yeah. billionaires and you know politicians and you know people with a large reach and influencers with a large audience and network, talk to them about the Venus Project. Find out as much as you can yourself so that when you go to represent it, you'll be all the more convincing and have a better chance of getting them on board. Right. So it's yeah. not misinterpreted. Thank you so, so, Thank so you. much Thank for joining you. us and for being here with us. We are so excited to bring our new film, A World Worth Imagining, Jock Fresco, The Man with the Plan, to life. It launches on 11-11-2019, and that's at 11-11 a.m. Venus, Florida time. That's Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> so uh, from then on, it'll be available at least on our website at souldocumentary.love and our Vimeo channel at Soul Documentary. We haven't yet talked with you about, about putting the film on, on the Venus Project website. There are links and everything everything to us and we're, we're, we're working on that as well to make it as widely as available as possible. It will be three dollars for a rental and viewing of the film uh, at first and we'll see where that goes. We need to continue to support what we're doing and to share some of that with you for what you're doing and we're supporting you obviously in many ways. So we thank you for your support and for being here and just such an honor to bring Roxanne uh, into our show so listen. So thank you so much for joining us and you and let's do this. Let's create a better world. It, it can't, it, 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 we can't stay on this path. It's not sustainable. That's true. All right. So before we go, we were going to reach over and do a nice chair oh, hug here. Share some love. My pleasure. My honor. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. For everything you're doing. My pleasure. It's all, I couldn't see it any other way. It's just my life's work. Mm -hmm.